another weekend and well my weekend's Monday and Tuesday which kind of stinks because I miss out on all the barbecues and the weekends and all that other fun stuff people do but oh well it is what it is what it is I had a number of people who are having trouble with burning ISO images to disk so today I'm going to show you how to do that in both Windows and Linux but when you're downloading those large files, it's always a good idea to check the MD5 sums to make sure that the file didn't get corrupted while it was downloading. So I'm going to show you how to do that in Windows and Linux. And all the fun starts now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Okay, now, first, before I begin, please read the show notes. Uh, there's a little click arrow. If you can't see everything that I have listed there, there will be links to all the important applications that you're going to need in Windows to, to uh, do what I'm going to demonstrate here. Okay, and I'm going to start this first part on MD5 sums. The reason you want to check the MD5 sums on any file that you, large files that you're downloading is because you want to ensure that the integrity is okay on them. Okay, so I went ahead and I downloaded this application called WinMD5 Free. All right, and all I have to do is just go ahead and extract that file. Okay, and I'll close uh, my uh, archiving utility. Okay, and then when I went on Linux Mint's website, I captured the MD5 sum for the ISO image that I downloaded. I'm going to right click and copy this, and then I'm going to right click and paste it here after I clear all this out. Right, and then I'm going to browse to my backup drive. And I'm going to select the Linux Mint 12 GNOME DVD 64-bit. I'm going to be doing a review on this uh, this weekend, by the way. Okay, so let's open that up. It's going to generate the MD5 sum. It'll take a moment to do that. Happy, happy, joy, joy. By the way, I'm running Windows XP, but you will also be able to do this in Vista and Windows 7. I just don't have Windows 7 anymore because I wiped it off of my hard drive. So, uh, it is what it is. I always liked Windows XP a lot better. Got a lot more uh, effective use out of it. Windows 7 wasn't that bad either, but mm, I really did not like Vista very much. I can't decide whether I hated Vista more or Windows Millennium Edition. Ugh. Bad stuff, let me tell you. Okay, looks like it's almost done. Okay, now, we press verify, and you will see that these values have both matched. This is a perfectly good file for um, burning. Okay, now, let's go ahead and do this in Linux. I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal. All right, and I'm going to uh, change directory to documents because that's where I have the file stored. And remember, it is case sensitive. So if you type it in in lowercase letters, you're not going to get the folder. Okay, and then I'm going to list the files in the directory. I'm just going to type in ls. Okay, and then you can see I have a folder, I have this item, and then I have some other things in here. I just want to copy this. So I'm just going to highlight it, right click, and copy. Now, in the next line below, I'm going to type MD5SUM 
space, right click and paste, and then press enter. It will take a moment, but it won't take as long as it did in Windows to do the MD5 sum. And as you can see here, let me move this over so I can take a closer look at this, you will see that we have a match. Just going through and looking up and down here. Yes, that is a perfect match. So we can easily burn this item. Okay, let's go back into Windows because I know uh, a lot of you uh, Windows users who want to try out Linux will need to burn this to a disk. Now, let's go ahead and uh, find our disk burning software. Gosh, I feel like I'm in the Wizard of Oz. It's the Wicked Witch in the West, Microsoft Myrna. Windows doesn't come with DVD software pre-installed. <laughs> Myrna, you wench, are you feeling a little thirsty? Now that we've got that out of the way, why don't we install a really good disk burner? Now, this is bar none my favorite disk burner that I've used in Windows XP and Windows 7. There's a link in the show notes for this, and it's called All Free Disk Burner. So let's go ahead and install that now. The link is in the show notes, of course. Okay, I do not want the search bar and all that other spyware. Well, actually, it isn't spyware, but uh, actually it looks like that would be something useful, but nah, I don't need it. All right, so just select next, and well, we can add a desktop shortcut. All right, and then we'll install it. Okay, good. And then we'll just uh, click Finish. It will launch the program. Interestingly enough, this runs great in Linux. And uh, so I'm going to, uh, but I'm not going to show you the demonstration in Linux unless I absolutely have to. All right, so let's go ahead and right here, you want to go into More Tools. You've got all these. You can make a VCD or DVD video, an audio CD or data CD, DVD. But in this, more tools, and we want to select ISO Burner. Okay, and then a Druid will pop up. Now, something I'd like to point out is uh, if you're using Windows, it will ask you to use the SPTI. If you are running this under Wine and Linux, it will only work with ASPI. I burned Linux Mint 12 earlier today. Uh, using this program in Linux and it did a magnificent job. As a matter of fact, I like it even better than Brazero. So I'm going to continue using this actually. Alright, and okay, it did not find the drive. Let's press refresh. Nothing. Okay, then let's try ASPI. I know I have the drive connected. Okay, this is not working. So I'm going to go ahead and shut down this machine. But I am going to simulate this program running just as though as it was in Windows. I believe this is an issue with the VirtualBox driver. Actually, I tried this earlier and it crashed Windows. So let me go ahead and power off the machine here. And I'll go ahead and load it up here in Linux. Okay, so let's make pretend that this is running in Windows because it's not working in the virtual box, that's for sure. Go into More Tools, ISO Burner. Okay, and then you'll press Next. Now, it's not going to work in Linux with this selected, but if you are using Windows, you will want this one selected. Otherwise, select this one if it doesn't detect your drive. 
going to go ahead and look for it and it found it. Press next. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and navigate to where our file is located and that is in documents. Press next. Track at once is fine. Send optimum power calibration. And then in burning speed, you should always select the lowest speed. My experience has shown that when you select a lower speed, you're going to get a better burn. It does take longer, but the thing is, um, I've had problems burning at the fastest speed possible, and especially when data is critical, you really want to make sure you have a good burn and a good lasting disk. So I always go with the slowest speed possible. Okay, and then it says click next to start burning. I am not going to do that because I have already burned this disk in Linux using this drug. Now, when the program is finished, it will eject the disk and then you just simply press next and uh, you'll be done. I'm just going to go ahead and press cancel for now, but definitely a really cool tool and uh, it runs great in Linux as well. I just cannot sing this program enough praises. Uh, it is bar none my favorite, uh, my absolute favorite burning utility, and I'm glad that I tried to play with this today and, it, and I got it working. Uh, by the way, I will be revisiting uh, Linux Wine and Vineyard uh, as part of my Pin Guy OS 1104 series, but you'll be able to also do all this stuff in any Ubuntu flavor, and I'm going to cover running more Windows applications natively in Linux. Okay, enough of digression now. Let's go ahead and open up Rosero. Or any Linux-based disk burning utility will be fine. There's K3B, there's uh, Rosero, and there are a number of them. Okay, and basically when you open up Brazero, you will have an option to burn image. So you select that. You select the disk image that you want to use. I've done that here. Okay, now, before you click burn, hit properties. Okay, and make sure you select the slowest speed for your DVD. And then, of course, use burn proof. It is the same thing as we did in the other program for optimum disk calibration. Okay, once you have those selected, press close. Then just simply press burn. Now my only caveat with Brazero is sometimes when it finishes burning it cannot eject the disk, whereas all free disk burner just works without fail. But after you press burn, when it's done, it will notify you that it is completed, that you may have to eject the disk manually. Well, that's all there is to burning an ISO image to DVD. If you thought this was useful, please hit like and subscribe. Please tell your friends about Spantry's Cup of Linux. Catch me on Facebook and Twitter. Even visit my blog at linuxspantry.blogspot.com and shout me a coffee. I have a ton of more videos headed your way. We're going to share a few laughs and it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.